Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel BBR English. I am Varshit and today on this channel I am going to discuss few tips and ideas upon how you can boost your communication skill and improve your spoken English fluency. And the topic for today's video is about how you handle arguments at your office in spoken English. So in an office particular setting, you might come across a place where you get into an argumentative situation. And by arguments, I do not mean heated debates with name calling and probably fist fights. So oh, I hope that does not happen at your office. But what I'm talking about is that you might actually get up into, let's just say, a technical debate or an, a complex discussion around a policy matter. And you have to present your arguments and you have to make your case upon why certain things could be done a certain way. For example, you could be in HR and you might be making a case for why the vacation calendar for the office should change. Or you could be a boss who's trying to explain to the uh, the shareholders that why the quarter targets might not be hit this year or this particular quarter and in those all those cases you have to understand how you have to frame your arguments and how you have to convincingly convey to the audience so that that can make your case and gain acceptance from your audience so first of all when you start in terms of creating any argument the number one thing you should definitely have is an opening uh, you want to have an opening that is bold, that is catchy, that is attentive and that is attractive. The idea ends up being is that you do want to capture the mind of the audience because uh, that creates the defining time point when the, everybody in the audience knows that now they have to start listening seriously to you. You're going to come there and going to communicate. There are a couple of examples of how you could use an opening. The opening does not have to be very, very complicated. One of the simplest ways to start with a quote or a statistic or other cases could be that you start with an anecdote and an example. And it could be a very simple line such as that, uh, when I first started in this company or once upon a time this happened and using these simpler openers can get people to pay attention and then you can start framing your next narrative and the rest of the arguments uh, the second more important thing is about the background and the context setting so not everybody in your audience specifically if you are let's just say a technical member of the team who's explaining the the problem of why you're not be able to hit the jira sprint targets to a product manager who may not be that technical you want to make sure that you provide them enough context of what the technical problems were or maybe uh, you are from the budgeting team and your analytics team come for your improving the or increasing the amount of Facebook and Google Ads budget and you may tell them that why a certain budget cannot be approved because of the financial decisions taken prior but the point ends up being is that you have to provide the background information for people to be able to understand why you're saying and where you are coming from because without it they will not be able to follow you and may not be convinced at all. The third thing you have to do is obviously to highlight the main point. You have to make sure what the main point is. Uh, you want everybody to be able to understand the central thesis. This doesn't have to be long elaborate sentences. You just want to make a big point that will we be hitting the, uh, the quarter target for sales or not? Will we be having an increase in revenue or not? It's a simple point. You can simply say we will be hitting the revenue targets by 10% more than the previous quarter. Or you can say that we will be facing a dip in the stock price because of due to these, these conditions. Point is that the main point is the central thesis around everything is being, your entire narrative is being waived and you want people to know what that main point is and it could be a polarizing nature most likely it will be polarizing in nature either people will agree with you or people will disagree with you but for each cases you have to provide the supporting evidence and the arguments the next thing that you have to have you're in an argumentative setting and you're creating an argument is to have reasons and evidence next to the main point this is the most important component because your main point will never be convincing enough if you cannot give enough sufficient evidence or you cannot provide uh, logical reasons of why something is going to happen for example during lockdown period the reasons probably would have been very easy for a manufacturing industry that we cannot bring our workers in because of the lockdown it's a very simple example but it shows the the concept very well that you need to have a reason if you're just going to say that we cannot hit the revenue targets this year no provide no reason or evidence to back it up people will just not understand that if there was a valid reason or you just mess it up uh, for example, if you're not able to hit the revenue targets, you're going to say that uh, we are not able to do enough sales because the new competitor has come into the market and they're chewing share. And you can give an evidence that the new competitor has been increasingly market share for X number of years and now it is really starting to hit into our pockets. With providing these uh, evidence and reasons, these are the pillars on which your main point stands and that is what you want to have. Otherwise, people will never be confused and 
agree to what you're saying. The next thing you might want to have is also is counter arguments. So with counter arguments is sometimes almost always necessary because there will be some opposition to what you are saying. People will disagree that your reasons are not strong enough and you're going to provide them counter arguments about why the concerns that are being raised to you, why the criticism that you're getting is not uh, enough or does not hold sufficient merit. And you would find yourself using words like, however, you have a point, but you're not considering uh, X, Y, Z or something like uh, we have been looking into the matter, but the, uh, the reports and the facts suggest otherwise. You might find yourself using these words and phrases and developing counter arguments on spot is an important strategy and important characteristic you have to develop because you will definitely get oppositions on what you say. So you have to keep yourself to the mind of the opposition that you might be getting and prepare your facts and evidence in advance as well. Finally, conclusion. Uh, conclusion would be literally with the words like ultimately, finally, in the end, etc, etc. But the key idea ends up being is that you do want to bring back the main point once again. You want to highlight it. You do want to summarize everything you have said so far, not just the main point. And you definitely want to set a tone and an emotion for the uh, overall conclusion. For example, it should not just feel like empty that we, people do not even know when the conclusion has happened. You do want to leave things in positive and upbeat note in most scenarios. However, there can be instances where you cannot talk about in an upbeat fashion. The situation is generally dim and you do want to remain authentic to that. Uh, for example, it could be that if the uh, layoffs are happening, you cannot be upbeat about it. You probably have to apologize and provide the overall sad demeanor about it that that, uh, that layoffs don't sad. Uh, but a necessary component that has to has to happen but you have to understand that in the conclusion you do have to repeat the main point summarize the arguments that he brought you to those main points and finally set up an emotional tone and provide a closure to the people that people know that you have stopped speaking and that, that the communication from you has come to an end so overall if you find yourself in, in an argument setting please do keep all of these points into the mind they are very very useful in terms of framing a structure and providing a complete and a comprehensive feeling to the audience that you were able to grab their attention you have to provide them enough inf information that they did not get confused you made the main point clear you had enough reasons you handled the doubts and the concerns and finally very important you provide a meaningful conclusion so I hope you enjoyed this particular video and if you did, please smash that like button and share this with your colleagues and co-workers and please do subscribe and turn on the notifications that will help you get all the videos as soon as they are published. Finally, please do let me know in the comment section what are your thoughts on this video and what next video you want me to do. Till then, goodbye.